Hello, I'm Evita and I'm going to tell uh, two case studies for conserving Latvian contemporary art. I will try to make it really short uh, because I have a lot of kind of information and after my presentation everyone can come and ask uh, details about this conservation. This is a uh, artwork uh, from Sarnita Mahalinya language. As you see, it's really interesting, uh, and uh, it uh, consists together with contemporary art collection. And the holder is uh, Astrid Rogole, and uh, the artwork is uh, really complicated at the same time because. It consists of metal parts, uh, glass and mirror parts, and then uh, as well lipsticks. Here is just a technical drawing, and I, I will tell shortly the message of artwork. Uh, maybe it's my interpretation, but uh, the artwork shows women's mm, uh, women's uh, hunting and um, this hunting uh, symbol is this red lipsticks. Uh, sorry, I made something. And here is uh, the report of damaging. And this, uh, here you can see in the pictures when the artwork was returning in contemporary art collection. And this were damage. And the main case of these damages was uh, improperly made unpacking. Uh, and uh, it was already third time when they were damaged. And for that, uh, I also made the schema for uh, pack in and pack out. And also, I made a lot of kind of drawings that the people can uh, see how to do that because that was the reason why usually it has damaged. Uh, also, the artwork uh, consists with different kind of uh, materials, and you see here some damages. It's uh, mirror damages and also metal damages, and these damages. Uh, are like I can say maybe it's included already in artwork because this this metal mirror three table with oak drawer was uh, bought in an antiqua. That means it's already as the artist idea. And here you see really the lipsticks, and up uh, there is a, this uh, nice cover which is sticked together with the tapes. <laughs> And I have also a small surprise for you. I will gonna show you. In the end, I also will tell uh, the concept which I made when I was uh, making this research. I was also uh, in different kind of uh, in one factory in Latvia. We have zinters. I think everybody knows that. And the lipsticks, first lipsticks were bought in, in uh, this factory, but uh, it's really a pity that this company don't produce anymore the lipsticks, but I get the recipe <laughs> at least. <laughs> and <laughs> and these uh, this all materials uh, are used in producing of lipsticks, and here uh, I going to show you, everybody can touch and check uh, how lipsticks are now. And this is changed lipsticks uh, from the artwork, as I know. And here also is some materials which you can just take and look some consistencies. And there is also written what kind of it is. And uh, there is inside also some other kind of lipsticks. Uh, this uh, lipsticks are with damages, and these damages is usually happens in producing process, 
and uh, it really helps to me make concepts for that. And then, and the moment, uh, as I know, and I was talking with Astrida, uh, we have one defect, and uh, the defect is this one. It's maybe caused in English sweating, and usually, usually the sweating happens when the wax and oils are not properly mixed together in producing process. And these are uh, after conservation. A restoration I made uh, uh, something else like a, a cupel which covering the lipsticks by the transporting uh, and the, this uh, cover doesn't uh, move and it's stable and for that it doesn't uh, make defects again and uh, these concepts which I made it was uh, like the first one was I also interviewed the artist and the uh, artist was uh, really nice and she really helped me. We talked a lot, lot of what kind of solutions we could make and I was asking maybe we could uh, replace the lipsticks by some kind of hard material and used the color, this red intensive color. And then uh, Sarmita told no, it changed all idea of artwork. And the second was uh, then we are replacing and it was like uh, usually uh, how we did before and the third concept I made when I was uh, making this research in cosmetic company and I, I thought that maybe <coughs> it's possible to remelt and mold again the same lipsticks and add uh, a conservance for prolonging the life of lipsticks uh, yeah, and this is about Sarmite, and next will be about Yus Boyko exhibition. Now you can see upstairs, and uh, about salt embolism, and uh, about the stickle, stickly salt legs. The first will be salt embolism, you can see the picture from first exhibition in Berlin. It was helping quite a lot for me, because Mm, uh, here you can see the, each object, object and then I also tried to read different kind of information which I got from Mara and uh, also different kind of uh, notes from artists and it really helps to me make to this reconstruction. Here is uh, just uh, one one piece of this uh, object and uh, as you see here is under the <coughs> salt and glass is, is uh, stones then comes salted glass and then is coming salt and then just uh, glass uh, and the size is A3 well, it's easier to understand how big they are I hope that everybody has already we are upstairs and take a look. Uh, also, a lot of uh, maybe visitors, they have a question. How we were installing the artworks? And uh, here is uh, the first picture is from Berlin. It, the, the artist made this one and he figured out by his own power maybe uh, to find the ungrade under under the grades uh, gears, and uh, he also made the drawings and put the artworks in these cross points. But in uh, our situation, we asked uh, to make this drawing uh, to specialist. We invited the specialist, and the specialist made a drawing, and then it was easier to install this uh, installed these artworks in the cross lines of these energetic points. Next, uh, I will tell about uh, this testing process. This is salts, different kind of salts. The first one is similar kitchen salt, which you're using for cooking. And then it's uh, table salt, and then it's extra table salt. I was, <laughs> I was working with uh, 
uh, uh, similar salt because uh, this salt was making a crystals and these two other ones it doesn't make a crystals and then uh, it was not so good for reconstruction yeah here is examples uh, I was testing how to make this surface and also it was really interesting and all, all these tests all these tests was uh, really nice and I also enjoyed that and uh, this is the last test which was really nice and I also uh, decided to make uh, this in this way uh, if somebody has a question then you can ask me later uh, about uh, what kind of solvents and what kind of uh, details I add there and here I test uh, how to cover the glass uh, first one is just a brush with salted water uh, here you can see like uh, you can make a drawing some new art uh, second one I was using uh, hands with globes that just to covering it and the third one I was using a straight strainer and then sprayed the water on the surface and uh, this surface was uh, really really the same as an artist and I chose to use this way to salt glass as a previous uh, artwork you saw that uh, we had a problems about uh, transportation package and, and for that I also thought okay here will be a same problem and then I also start to think maybe I need to make a package and this package also I made by myself and uh, then it's easy also to bring to other exhibitions and you can handle and you can have after a while and you don't need to sort again a sort we can take a look how long it will stay as in this form uh, here is a direction of installation First comes stones, then second is salted glass, salt, and then glass. Then here is also a picture from exhibition, and I think you have seen this also. I like this also really much. And the next one will be stickle salt legs. They are together five artworks, and the most problematical. Uh, was the glass surface with salt and I also need to find out how to make the same surface as the artist with red are marked the lowest of salt and with blue one is marked uh, this metal frame uh, the effects and also this uh, the effects are marked because it's also the artist's uh, artist frame and uh, I, I think it's also important because it's like uh, the piece uh, of uh, his and then it's really also we need to think about that here you can see the tests also I was testing a uh, salt and trying to figure out uh, how I can get the same uh, surface as the artist has and uh, I think uh, it was really really hard in one way because I was using different kind of materials and also I had a different kind of tools also I thought maybe I can put in the presentation but it will prolong the presentation I chose the last one uh, I used the brush uh, with thicker consistency in the water I salt and here is uh, the fragments uh, this is before restoration and this is after restoration. When you uh, go up and take a look at these five artworks, uh, from from uh, you can't see it really like you must go in really deep, and then you can see some parts. And uh, I think I get uh, really uh, really same uh, style as the artist had, but it took uh, quite a long time because I was working on this project maybe two two months. Is. Here is the backside, and um, the backside was also the reason why the surface of salt was really damaged because uh, these metal parts up, 
was started corrode, and then I was also cleaning them and covered with protective layer. Also, here is a photo after restoration and before restoration. You can also see, and I want to tell also thank you for listening and attention. <laughs> ask Amara because she was also really helping me because she was making a huge research about the Voiko life and his art. So if some, uh, anybody hasn't seen the exhibition yet, so you have a, an opportunity <coughs> to, to take the elevator to the top floor where the exhibition was opened yesterday. Uh, any questions? About the lipsticks? Yeah. <laughs> of course about the lipsticks. Thank you very much for this very interesting uh, presentation where um, I think on the one hand, I think you, you're working in the intersection between material and, and meaning. Um, mm -hmm. But in relation to meaning, then, um, why is it important that to have a particular kind of lipstick? Um, it mostly was my idea because uh, I was uh, I was thinking if uh, there is a possible to get an old recipe and uh, if it's possible to make and uh, also the pigment still is available then why not we can why we not can make uh, these lipsticks and I think it would be a really interesting sample for contemporary art conservation and restoration. I'm sure I also was making a different kind of research uh, by wax art and uh, uh, also there is some lipstick art works uh, in uh, America and I, I read also different kinds of information and then I think it's uh, really honest to artists to do that and uh, I think it's important. My experience is not are you experienced with molds? With molding? Yeah, with molding, yeah. I was uh, looking in the factory and also I made my own deal with uh, factory laboratory. They told every time if I have a problem I can come and they, they will give me equipment and tell how I can make it at home. <laughs> uh, I probably also uh Add that uh, there is this kind of uh, uh, local history involved because this local uh, uh, factory, Zimpas, which is uh, right now actually under a state of protection against a bankruptcy, you know, and ladies are buying, buying lipstick, <laughs> no, no lipstick, but creams just to, to keep this factory going. Yeah. And that oh, also lipsticks. <laughs> so they do produce lipsticks. They're producing, but they don't produce this so kind of cereal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, that's going to be, uh, well, when we met uh, before the symposium, I found it uh, very interesting, and I know that there's quite a lot of foreigners here. Uh, so can you tell a little bit more about the conservation and department at the Art Academy of Latvia and maybe a little bit about the education of conservators in Latvia as you are there? Uh, uh, yes, I can tell because I was ending La Latvian Art Academy and uh, we, we academy is usually based uh, on uh, picture restoration. And uh, I was also ended my uh, bachelor thesis uh, by the, as a feature restorer, uh, but in the same time I was thinking uh, I need something more and it goes together with my character that I need to research and find and also this feeling, uh, it, it was so strong that I so no, I need to think and then I will choose this contemporary art and also the first the person which really helped me is to start uh, master studies in the contemporary art was Inga Meldere. Uh, and then she told, no, you should go because it's really interesting and you can get a lot of kind of 
impression and ideas and also I, I, I thought, okay, I will start. And then I was uh, one year in uh, Bern and uh, I was uh, there studying a, a one year contemporary art conservation and restoration and media art. And uh, also it was a really uh, uh, hard time for me because I need to really change my life and also my thinking way. But uh, I think it was a great experience. And then I was returning again to Latvia and ended my master's degree with uh, Sami the Smiling as artwork uh, language. I think that's. Um Kaspar, can I add one more thing? I just wanted to thank you very much for a really exciting presentation. And Where did you get the microphone? <laughs> statement previously is that it's difficult to promote uh, restoration and conservation as an exciting uh, PR uh, thing. But uh, your, I think the, the key word is curiosity, which you really showed through your, through your presentation, that it's driving force behind your work. And I think with this you can motivate a lot of young, uh, young people to join this, because this uh, science of uh, material science uh, is very developing field and you definitely have a lot of know-how how to add to it uh, to some Porsche uh, engineering for instance and I mean they learn a lot of interesting things from you. Thank you. I think that it will be really like uh, a step forward and uh, I also would like to ask uh, new students to think about this direction. I just want, wanted to ask you, did, did Sarmit, uh, Sarmit Malin told you that actually this lipstick piece was made like homage to Helene Demoko, which was one of the most visible curator in the 90s and still are doing some curator job. And actually because she was wearing this particular color of <laughs> lipstick all the time. And I think when you next time will do the reconstruction again, then probably you should consult her about the particular <laughs> color which is her. It's really important. When I when I when I listen to presentations like these, I, I think that actually uh, people from conservation departments are, uh, could use that uh, old uh, slogan of Shakers Movement, saying that their hearts are to artists and their hands are on the work. 